Welcome to another edition of my Fireside Chat. The Delta State University Colloquia Distinguished Speakers Lecture Series continued last week featuring Dr. Luann Woodward, who is the Vice Chancellor for Health Affairs at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Dr. Woodward's speech, titled Healthcare in Mississippi, What You Need to Know, offered our students, faculty, staff, and our community an insightful look at the past, present, and future of healthcare in our state. Dr. Woodward, uh, who did her residency and board certification in emergency medicine at UMMC, has served on the faculty there for nearly 20 years. In addition to her role as vice chancellor, she also serves as a tenured professor of emergency medicine. Her personal and professional commitment to the medical center and her deep understanding of health care in our state have helped to keep UMMC at the forefront of health care, education, and research, both in Mississippi and nationwide. Dr. Woodward, thanks for joining me today very much. We appreciate your being here and serving as our 2017 Spring Colloquium uh, guest speaker. What changes do you see that have affected Mississippi related to health care uh, in the most recent past? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm glad to be here. Um, talking about the Medical Center in, in health care in Mississippi is my second favorite thing my favorite thing is to talk about my kids, of course, but yeah. second to that, talking about medicine and health care and the medical center um, is what I'm very passionate about. So there are a lot of changes happening in health care mm -hmm. right now. It, it's easier to tell you what's not changing than to tell you what is changing, mm -hmm. both at the state level and the national level. At the national level, I think everybody is aware that the Affordable Care Act, the Obamacare program is being considered um, for change and that the President and, and, and a lot of the members of Congress you know, have, a, have ideas about how they want to change that. That will affect us. Uh -huh. What will ultimately be passed and what that looks like, we don't know. We're, we're trying to follow it closely and, and of course imagine how we might need to adjust, but, uh -huh. but that's an unknown. And then other things outside of the political world that's happening is all across the country, you're seeing things change where health systems are starting to partner together in different ways, sometimes through mergers and acquisitions, sometimes through different types of creative partnerships. We're seeing that starting in Mississippi now. So that kind of change is coming to Mississippi. Um, physicians are starting to form into networks. So all of the pieces are changing in Mississippi. And then at purely sort of a state level, um, as we're all aware, we've had challenges in Mississippi with our revenues and challenges with the state budget, um, which has forced the governor who has to, through his obligation, balance the budget mm -hmm. to make some very difficult cuts. And, and that's affected the Mississippi State Department of Health. It's affected the medical center. It's affected the mental health um, programs. Um, as well as all of our colleges and universities. So, so all of those things have made the landscape of healthcare care very, very uncertain. Um, people like to ask, what does the future hold? Mm -hmm. and, and the answer is, I, my goodness, I wish I knew. Um, there are many uncertainties out there. The things that are certain, however, are, especially in a place like Mississippi, is the fact that we have a great need and a lot of challenges. Um, we're in the wrong place on lots of lists. You know, we're in the wrong place. Um, so for people who have a real passion for healthcare and a passion for helping others, there's no better place to be than Mississippi because you never have to wonder at the end of the day if the work that you did made a difference or not. Right. So the, the things that are constant and the things that are not changing is just the needs that we have in Mississippi, the challenges, the opportunities, um, that, that's the constant. The rest of the world around us is changing in ways that we cannot always predict, but, um, but there are many things that are constant. Like most people, Mississippians uh, cherish that personal attention, uh, knowing they have a doctor, somebody mm -hmm. who's going to give them that attention. Everybody feels that um, as there are efforts to socialize medicine sometimes, mm -hmm. we see conflicts mm -hmm. there. Um, is there anything on the forefront that you think is going to change that so that there's a feeling that I can go to my doctor, to my clinic, 
What's changing in healthcare that might change that equation a little bit? So one of the biggest challenges we have in Mississippi related to that is access. And access, our access challenges um, are multifaceted. Mm -hmm. For one thing, we don't have enough healthcare providers for the citizens of our state. In the physician workforce bucket, we are last in all the rankings of the states in physicians per capita. Mm -hmm. We're number 50. So we're last, and in many of our other members of the healthcare workforce professional groups, we are not where we want to be. So access is a problem, um, a challenge, from the standpoint of the numbers of healthcare professionals. Um, another big challenge is patients in Mississippi having the ability to get to wherever the doctor is, or, or the nurse practitioner, or, or whoever the person is that they see as their main healthcare provider. Um, having the means to get to that place, which is why programs like the telehealth program and other things that push access out into the communities is so important. And then there's the financial situation. You know, we face mm -hmm. such poverty in Mississippi that, that people who might have a ride, and there might be a doctor mm -hmm. in their community, feel, don't get to the point where they feel like health care is the top priority paying the bills, keeping the lights on, you know, get, buying food takes priority sometimes over health care. Um, I spent many, many years in the emergency department mm -hmm. and it is a, a very special place. You see people at times when, you, I, I, what I have said many times is you see both the best and the worst in people. You, you see people at, at very, you know, terrible and awful points in their life but then you also have the opportunity to sometimes see them kind of rise to that occasion. But, but what I saw many, many times in the emergency department were people who would present and, and they would be very sick. They would have an illness that is manageable in, in normal circumstances, whether it's diabetes or heart failure, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, hypertension. It, it should be a very manageable illness if they have a physician they have somebody that they see and they see them on a regular basis and they're compliant with their meds, but in fact, I would see them when they were two years away from that mm. and, and would be very, very, very sick, needing a, a critical care admission and, and a very expensive and costly hospital stay for something that if, like I said, you rewind two years back mm -hmm. and they had been at the place in their life where health care and health care maintenance and preventive medicine could have been a priority, they wouldn't have gotten to that place. Right. And many times it's the finances that drives those mm -hmm. sorts of decisions. So again, I lump all that under access. Right. That's one of our major challenges, but it, there are many reasons for those challenges. That's right. You run a $1.6 billion operation, certainly one of the largest financial enterprises in Mississippi. What new and exciting things are happening at the medical center, both from the teaching side, the practice side, uh, outreach to the communities that you would like to share with us? There are new and exciting things happening all over the place. We, uh, we don't have time to cover everything, but I'll try to touch on some of the things. Um, on the education side, we're, we are growing our class size in almost every, every school that we have. And, and that is in response to the healthcare workforce you know, stats in Mississippi and the fact that we need more physicians, dentists, physical therapists, nurses, et cetera. So, so those schools are all growing in response to the need. Um, we have a new school that's coming online, the School of Population Health. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since we've established a new school, so we are very much excited about that. We've got a new education building opening up this summer. Um, our challenge will now be having the money to operate the building, but we've, di we've got a new building opening up this summer. In the research world, We've also got a translational research building opening this summer. And what we have done over the last, I would say, eight years or so, starting before my time of leadership, certainly, but is really focus our research efforts on the diseases that are most impactful to the citizens in our state. Mm -hmm. um, on obesity, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, um, cancer, those diseases that are most damaging to our own citizens. So now, if you are the chair of biochemistry, for example, you know that the next faculty member hire should be somebody 
who's working in one of those areas of focus. So we get synergy, more bang for our buck, trying to um, be as aggressive as we can for those diseases, again, that are most damaging to the citizens of our state. And then in the clinical world, we, we have almost a schizophrenic mission in the clinical world. So um, maybe I only say that because I come from a healthcare background, but, <laughs> but, but we have a range of clinical programs that are important for the training of our students and our residents and then, and some of those are um, programs that are primary care, just kind of the basic care of patients. Then we also, as the state's only academic medical center, feel a great responsibility to develop programs in those areas where we are the only ones. Mm -hmm. So our, many of our pediatric specialties and our pediatric surgeons, the, the category that they fall in, whether it's our pediatric heart surgeon or our pediatric um, orthopedic oncologist or whatever it is, it's the only one in the state. Right. And on the adult side, you know, we, we've got the only liver transplant program, et cetera. Programs like that where we feel a statewide obligation mm -hmm. um, because we know if we don't have that program and offer that service that citizens of Mississippi won't have an option in the state. Mm -hmm. They will have to leave the state. Um, some of our citizens do leave Mississippi for care, and that will always happen, especially on the extreme north and south ends. It just makes sense if you live in South Haven to go to Memphis. That's sure. just, you know, it makes sense. But, but I feel like that shouldn't be the only option. There should be an in-state option. Mm -hmm. So that really drives a lot of our thinking in the clinical programs. Right. One of the, um, if I could just elaborate yeah. one more minute yeah. on that, one of the, um, things that I shared a few weeks ago with another group was the fact that, speaking of our liver transplant program, um, it, three years ago, the, the, the lead physician in that program, his name is Dr. Chris Anderson, every time there was a transplant in our, in our whole transplant program, he'd send me a note, he'd let me know, you know, just wanted you to know, we, we did this, we did a liver transplant, we did a pancreas, we did a, we did a kidney, whatever it was. He, it was big enough news that he mm -hmm. would send me a special mm -hmm. note and we'd talk about it and be all excited. And about a month ago, I was meeting with him on a Monday and, and we were meeting about a whole list of other things and he said, oh, by the way, since last Wednesday, I did eight transplants. Good question. So in just that short amount of time, yeah. we went from the point of each and every one kind of being big news right. to the point now where it's, oh, by the way, in the last week, you know, well, not even a week. In the last five days, I did eight transplants. That's amazing. I know. Now, in That's your own good stuff. incredible experience, you've been a practitioner, mm -hmm. an academician, a professor, a researcher, and now an administrator. You're running the whole show. <laughs> from where does this passion come? <laughs> so, I grew up in Mississippi, and I grew up in a very rural part of the state, Carroll County. And and I know here, I don't have to explain where Carroll County is, but you know, there are some places in where I have to say, it's kind of close to Greenwood, Grenada, Winona, and that little triangle. Known for the picture show. But exactly, exactly. So I, I have seen the need. There is such need here. Mm -hmm. and, and so that is kind of at the heart. It's just I know what the need is. And then the excitement about it comes from the people at the medical center. When there are days, and there are occasionally days when, when you know, you feel like, oh, it's been a long, it's been a long few days and you, you feel like the challenges just seem so big. It, it, if I make the opportunity to go sit down and have a visit with a group of the students, or go to the NICU or to any of our patient care areas, the emergency room, just passing through, stop to talk to some of the faculty, stop to talk to some of the nurses, um, you know, visit with people. The, the dedication that is there, mm -hmm. it just like it fills you back up and just gets you fired up and ready to go again and fight another day. I feel like we have got between our about 10,000 employees and mm -hmm. 3,000 students, I, I feel like we've got an army that's all pulling in the same direction and that is inspiring. That is, that is. Well, your passion is very obvious and very <laughs> admirable. Thank you for that. Thank now, one final fun question. 
Uh, those looking in on this program are probably saying, hmm, this is a woman who is an emergency room specialist. In the television world, are all these ER programs authentic? <laughs> no, they're, they're not. not. They're not. Um, a number of them are close, but, but they're not. Yeah, there seems not. to be too much drama moment there's, to moment. There's too much drama. Things happen faster and, and all the hanky-panky love life, that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just blew the cover for all the, those who watch it for that reason. There you go. Well, thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Thank you for all you do, and thank you for coming to Dell State. Thank you. I'm delighted. Appreciate you being be. with me. Thank Thanks you. so much. In other news on campus, Dr. Jamie Dahman, Fulbright Program Advisor for Delta State, is hosting a how-to Fulbright workshop tomorrow, April 18th, from 215 to 115 in Bailey Hall, room 209. The program will cover topics such as how to secure grant affiliations, how to write a statement of grant purpose, and how to write a personal statement for Fulbright applications. The event is open to all DSU students, faculty, and staff. And professional counselors, school counselors, social workers, family therapists, and uh, psychologists from all across the region will be on our campus this Friday, April the 21st for the 36th annual uh, F.E. Woodall Spring Conference. This is one of our counseling program's signature events and we welcome the professionals who will be coming to town for this conference. As always, to keep up with our events and activities and news, please visit our website at deltastate.edu. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next time on Fireside Chat.